All righty, so we'll give people a couple minutes to log in here, get settled. There we go. And hit record. Yeah, go. Aha. That's important, hey? Very. Okay. All righty. Okay, hi everybody. Uh, my name is Rachel Fowley Newfeld. I'm the event coordinator for McNally Robinson in Saskatoon. And uh, I'd like to firstly acknowledge that we're streaming from Treaty 6 territory, the traditional territory of the Cree peoples, as well as the homeland of the Métis Nation. Um, so I'm excited uh, to welcome you to the virtual launch of Thelma, A Life in Pictures, uh, which of course is a pictorial uh, biography of Saskatchewan art photographer Thelma Pepper. <clears throat> Um, Amy Jo Eamon is here with us, of course, along with guest host JC Paulson, uh, who is also a writer. Hello. Hi, everybody. Um, so before we get going, I just want to remind everyone that although tonight's launch is virtual, uh, we do have physical copies of Thelma available for purchase. So uh, you can purchase those online. I'll drop a link to where you can do that in the chat, or you can just give the store a call um, anytime. Uh, let's see here. Uh, you'll also notice that there is a Q&A button on your screen. So if you have questions at any point, just feel free to type those into the Q&A box. And there'll be some time later on uh, for us to get to those. And uh, if your question doesn't get answered, Amy Jo is happy to answer them on social media, or you can contact her through her website. Um, but we'll get to that a little bit later on. Um, so a little bit more about Amy Jo. Uh, she's an award-winning author based in Saskatoon, and her previous books include Prairie Feast, A Writer's Journey, uh, Home for Dinner, and Out of Old Saskatchewan Kitchens. And she's also worked as a journalist for CBC and a local food columnist for the Saskatoon Star Phoenix. So we're really excited that she could join us tonight virtually. Uh, we wish that, that she and all of you could be here uh, with us in person. But for now, we're, we're going for the virtual launch. And uh, yeah, I'm really pleased to welcome Amy Jo Eamon. So I'm going to pass it over to her. You can clap at home if you're sitting. Yeah. Yay. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you, McNally Robinson, for hosting me tonight for this virtual book launch of my real book. I'm so happy that all of you are here. I would love to introduce to you my friend, um, Joanne Paulson, a former colleague, also an author herself. But most importantly for this evening, Joanne's grandmother was photographed by Thelma and her Oma, pictures of her Oma are in this book. So I thought it would be so special to have Joanne co-hosting with me here tonight to help you tell the story, help me tell the story of Thelma. So thanks for being here, Joanne. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I'm honored. I'm honored to be at your book launch. <clears throat> thank you. Um, I've seen this book, although I haven't, you know, seen every single page yet. And it is just the most beautiful thing. That's wonderful. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Um, do you want me to carry on? Well, I, would you have more to say? Yeah, sure. Carry on. Okay. Well, I think I was expecting great things. Um, I was not expecting this. It is just it's visually beautiful. I'm not sure I've ever seen anything quite like it. All in black and white, very glossy, very, uh, very elegant looking. But the thing that struck me the most about this book, Amy, is the compassion that just comes off every page, not just in your writing and your um, uh, depiction of Thelma, mm -hmm. but Thelma's compassion, you know, for human mm -hmm. beings. Uh, mm -hmm. for the people that she that she photographed for the places she photographed and she is just a, truly a remarkable human being and it just pops off every page I am just I, I'm beyond impressed with this beautiful beautiful work so congratulations 
Well, thank you. And I want everyone out to know that I did not pay you to say that. I no. <laughs> thank you. No money changed hands. That's right. It's just gorgeous. Uh, oh, thank you. Well, I wanted to start by uh, talking about how this book came about really shortly. And then Joanne and I are just going to have a little bit of a Q&A as a means of presenting this uh, story to everyone. So this, about two years ago, um, my publisher heard a documentary on CBC Radio, a documentary prepared by CBC Radio documentary producer David Gutnick. He was in Saskatoon. He met Thelma and he did a documentary about her photographs and her life. At that time, she was 98 years old and what a life she had to, um, to share. What a story she had to share. My publisher, uh, John McIntyre in Nova Scotia, heard this documentary. And the next day he phoned me up and said, Amy, this woman is fabulous. I love her story. I love her voice. I love her message. Let's see if we can do a book with her. So I made inquiries through friends and family and, um, and, and we connected and oh, she's such a lovely person to sit down and visit with. She's such a, uh, a wonderful conversationalist. What people will say is that when you're talking to Thelma, she makes you feel like you are the most important person in the room. And that is so true. And um, we work together very closely. And the result is this book that we're launching here today. So it took a year, took a year from when we started to do it till, till today. So I'm, I'm super excited to be launching it onto the world. A year is a long time, but not a in the book a world. Long time, but <laughs> It's not a long time in the book world, is it? No, it, it, it can take, oh, and especially when you have, um, you have so much material to draw on, like not just her photos, but her father's and her grandfather's, am I right? It must mm. have taken a lot of effort to choose the, you know, which photographs are going to make it to the book, I'm assuming. Oh, yes, it was, um, it was a, hmm, it, there were so many photos to choose from that it was, um, it, I wanted them all. How, how do yeah. you eliminate some <laughs> of those beautiful photos? As you've, as, as you've mentioned, um, Joanne, Thelma's uh, father and grandfather were both uh, amateur photographers and very beautiful amateur photographers. I've got some pictures here. I'm going to just um, share my screen with everybody and um, let's see how I do that. Mm -hmm. There. Are you seeing that now, everyone? That Joanne? I'm seeing that. Amy, I can see the front cover right now. Excellent. And it's um, that's what I wish to share. Um, this is the front cover of the book, and that is a picture of Thelma as a young girl reading a book. Someone looked at this picture and said, you know, it looks like she's kind of annoyed. <laughs> like, um, like her dad said, you know look up and she was like why are you bothering me while I'm reading this book but I have oh, to yeah. say that reading was always very very important to Thelma and actually as you'll see as we go through her story reading actually changed the course of her life so um, it was very fitting to have a picture like this on the cover of the book uh, because her dad was an amateur photographer and he had his own dark room he took so many pictures of them going on excursions uh, where she grew up in, um, she grew up in Nova Scotia, in the Annapolis Valley. This is in a field of wild daisies. So these are very typical pictures, but lovely pictures from her childhood that her father took of his kids. And wow. Thelma loved to go in the dark room with her dad. She became his little helper from a very early age. And they had great conversations about family and history and photography. And so by the time she was a teenager, she was very proficient in the darkroom. Uh, the family had a general store and it was part of their business. And so she was, she was very much a part of that aspect of her, her family life. She went off to college. Um, it, she went to Acadia in Nova Scotia and then on to McGill. In Acadia, she wanted to master in, or she wanted to, um, uh, specialize in chemistry. She was told that 
women could not study chemistry. This was about 1938, 1939. Chemistry was not considered a subject for women. So she did her thesis in, uh, in botany instead. Um, then she went on to McGill. She did a master's there where this picture that you're looking at, Alma is a love instructor for a group of chemistry students in a botany class. Really? It was very unusual to have female instructors at that time. But if you look at the back of the picture, that fellow in the back, they're kind of out of focus. That is Jim Pepper, the love of her life. She met him in this class and uh, they married. He took a position as a professor at the University of Saskatchewan. And that's how they ended up in Saskatoon where they had their children and had a life for themselves here. And Thelma was really a very devoted mother and wife. Uh, she wanted, she, did, she didn't want a career outside the home. She didn't look for one. This was the late 1940s, early 1950s. It wasn't really very common for women to have a career outside the home anyways. And Thelma really didn't aspire to it. She really felt that the best, the best job that she could do would be raising her children and helping her professor, or helping her husband as a professor. Uh, but the time came in her late 50s, her children had now all moved away from home uh, for, for university in their own careers. Her husband, Jim, was now uh, head of the Department of Chemistry, very busy with his work, traveling to conferences, uh, overseeing grad students. And Thelma, Thelma came to this, this point in her life where she just she felt like there was nothing for her. Like she had devoted herself to her family and, and, and wanted to, but now, now she needed something for herself. It was really a bad period for Thelma. Her mother died during this time frame, and she went into quite a depression at this time. Um, she was in depression, but she knew that she needed to do something that would make her feel good. And and something that she could share with others in her life. Up to this point, she had not picked up a camera herself. But at this, but right now she decided to. More, I think more at this point in her life, she really, she went back to nature, which was something that's very important in her childhood. She went out in the countryside and she took the camera along. They had a Pentax camera. She was taking color slides at this point. I only included one or maybe two in the book, but I included this one because of the notation that she wrote on that slide all's right with the world. And I just feel like at that time in her life, it was almost like a prayer for herself, an incantation that all will be right with the world. That's when her, yeah. when her, um, her mother passed away, Thelma inherited all of her father's and grandfather's negatives, hundreds, thousands, thousands of negatives. And she decided to go into the dark room and develop them. They had a dark room in their home in Saskatoon. This is a fabulous picture of her grandmother. That's her grandmother in the in the straw hat. She was a, her name was Alalia. She loved to fish and hunt and canoe. She was a very active outdoors woman. And in this picture, she is demonstrating, showing people how to string their fishing rods so that they can do some fishing. Um, she was just a role model for, um, for, for Thelma and developing all these pictures was a labor of love for Thelma. In fact, she took them back to Nova Scotia and had an art show with all these vintage negatives. And around this time, her husband Jim suggested that because she loved reading so much and loved reading out loud to her children when they were growing up, that maybe she should go down the street to the seniors home and start reading to the seniors. This was Luther, Luther Care Home on Temperance Street here in Saskatoon. It, I tell you, it wasn't very long that Thelma was there and the seniors started telling her their stories. She started listening to their stories. And a lot of these uh, seniors at that point were born in like 1895, 1900. They were in their 80s at the time. And they had amazing stories about coming to live on this land or the hardships of of pioneering and then having their own families during the 30s. These are stories of hardship that Thelma had never, ever really experienced herself. She was just fascinated with them. So she wanted to take their pictures. And this, 
this was, I should add that when Thelma was out in Nova Scotia showing her vintage photographs, she bought a camera out there, an old uh, Roloflex camera, much like the camera that her dad used to use when he was taking their pictures. So she was started taking this camera to the old folks home and she started taking their pictures in black and white so that she could develop them herself. She used all natural and ambient light as you can see. She never posed anyone. She just let them sit or stand or you know hold in their hand what they wish to just like her dad did. She never told anyone to smile or to look at the camera even. Oftentimes she used a remote um, a remote shutter so that she could take their pictures with no nothing being obtrusive between them while they were having a conversation or sitting together in the room. The joy for Thelma at this point was developing these pictures just so she could take them back to the, the seniors and show them. And it was around this time that she met Anna, this is Joanne's Oma, Anna Wilms. Anna didn't live at that senior's home. She still lived in her own home. Thelma was so fascinated with her story because Anna grew up in Russia in a Mennonite family. They lived through the Russian Revolution. They escaped kind of like on the last train that they could get. They had relatives in the Mennonite community north of Saskatoon. So that's kind of where they ended up and they made a whole life for themselves here. And I tell you, Thelma just loved listening to uh, Anna's story. And around this time, Thelma started recording these stories so that she had them on tape. And she started adding those to, the, to the, her photographs and telling stories that way. This is an excerpt from the book. And you can see from this how it's laid out where the pictures are so prominent with little bits of text that go along with the pictures. And um, this became her first exhibition, her first art exhibition, which she called Decades of Voices. After this exhibition was done, she got out into the countryside. She was fascinated by the uh, different groups that populated rural Saskatchewan, particularly along Highway 41, which ran from Saskatoon to Melfort. So this is a picture of, um, I believe it's in Tway, John Marco's inherited blacksmith shop. So she was just so fascinated with how they uh, made life for themselves in these towns and how they, how they held on to these towns, even though she knew that a lot of the were dying, the elevators were closing and the schools were closing, but those who lived there still made a wonderful life for themselves. This became Thelma's second art, art exhibition, which she called Highway 41. Uh, towards the end of this project, she started noticing that Jim was exhibiting signs of Alzheimer's. And in fact, she, they had to stop traveling and she spent several years at home as a primary caregiver for Jim until uh, the day came that he, he moved into Sherbrooke Community Center, a uh, care home here in Saskatoon, which Thelma loved. She loved Sherbrooke. They had this uh, philosophy of care there that just really emphasized happiness and enjoyment. They had a preschool in the building. They had gardens and Thelma just wanted to take pictures of these, these seniors there because she just, even though they suffered from various stages of dementia, some were unable to really articulate, but she just saw this spark, this life, this, this um, spirit in their faces that she really, really wanted to capture. That became her third art show, which she called Untie the Spirit. And it still hangs at Sherbrooke Community Center today where they um, set up a, a gallery for, for that purpose. And I'd, I'd like to close with uh, a picture of Thelma. This is Thelma in her room today um, with her Roloflex camera. And um, I just tell you a couple things closing here. You know, when Thelma was 92, she suffered a massive heart attack, a massive heart attack and had and underwent heart surgery, which at the time I'm told was one of the most extensive heart surgeries uh, performed on someone of that senior age in Saskatchewan, but they did so because other than her heart, she was in such great health, both physically and mentally. So um, they conducted the surgery and after her recovery, Thelma was awarded a, um, a lifetime achievement in the arts award from um, the Saskatchewan Arts Board, the Governor, Lieutenant Governor's Lifetime Achievement in the Arts Award. And she also was invested into the Order of Saskatchewan. So she had, had 
many accolades and many successes in the um, in the 40 years since she actually picked up a camera and started taking pictures. Um, so that's a, that's a quick run through of Thelma's life and and her art. Um, in closing, uh, like Joanne, I'd like to ask you, what did it mean to your grandma, to your Oma, to be photographed by Thelma? Oh, Oma thought she was a rock star because Thelma Pepper took her photos, you know. Um, the ones that I particularly remember are the one, there are two. There's one where Oma is sitting in the kitchen um, with her bowl and her whisk. And that was just so Oma. And the, that kitchen was so spare, but she, you know, made amazing meals and soups and then and I dishes of all kinds of things. And for the longest time, she made them on a wood stove. It, like I, I have no idea how she, how she did that. It was incredible. Anyway, um, when Thelma came to visit, it was like the queen coming. There's, there's no doubt. Um, and I think my favorite one was when they went out to the old homestead and she photographed Oma coming around the side of the barn. Uh, that photo can still bring me to tears. That was, um, um, that was Oma at her finest, you know, and it was such a gorgeous, gorgeous photograph. Still is, we should say. It is a gorgeous photograph. Um, yeah, and there's, That's we have a small the most version of it. Way to yeah, I know. Um, so yeah. Oma, Oma. Those, those photos are in thought, here as well. Are they? All of them? Yeah. All, yes, that's right. That's right. Oma thought Thelma was um, a genius. She, and she just, she loved her to pieces. And we talked about Thelma. I hadn't met her, um, but we talked about her all the time. I was like, oh, you know, she always got incredibly excited. I think they had, a, you know, a, a really special relationship as far as I could tell. And it, it thrills me to see those pictures of Oma and this is completely biased, I know, but I think they're some of the best ones she took. Mm. Just saying. I think so too. <laughs> I thought they I were great. So My grandmother was a, was a woman of great character and um, uh, very, I, and she went through a very hard time. So much. Yeah, they, they really were special together. Yeah. So, but you know, I bet you there are a lot of people out there, not just me, who you know, we'll look at those photos and have similar reactions to, oh my goodness, you know, they're really touching photos. And, um, I, I'm, you know, obviously I'm thrilled that Oma's in there, but I think other people have those responses as well. So are you going to read from the book, Amy? Yes, I am. I'm going to just read a passage from um, the end of the book. I'm actually going to read the dedication, which comes at the end of the book. And I'm choosing this because I want to emphasize um, Thelma's messages. Thelma believed in the power of creativity to overcome one's hardships in life. She believed that the power, her passion in photography brought her out of the depression that she was suffering in midlife. She felt that creativity helped so many of those pioneer women feel proud about themselves and care for their families, whether their creativity happened to be making a pie or jelly or, or sewing clothes from hand-me-downs and doing what they had to, with their creativity to create a life for themselves. And Thelma's message is that when we, we find joy in our creative moments and following our passions, and that's the best gift that we can give to ourselves. So this is, the, um, this is the dedication that I wrote at the back of the book. It's a little awkward to hold it in front of the camera here and, and read it. So bear with me if it doesn't look quite right, but I have to hold it far enough away I can read it. One afternoon in Thelma's 100th year on this earth, her friend Lois popped in for a visit. She wanted to introduce Thelma to her great granddaughter, Shelby, who was nine and in grade four. As always, Thelma was all questions. She's a good listener, but first, she's a good questioner. Lois was a well-respected piano teacher, now retired, so Thelma asked Shelby if she played the piano. I tried it, said Shelby, but I found that it wasn't my passion. And what is your passion, asked Thelma. Photography, said Shelby. I saved my money and I bought myself a camera. And there ensued a lively conversation about digital versus film, camera versus smartphone, 
favorite subject matter, following your passions, and the excitement of creativity. This book is dedicated to Shelby and to everyone following their creative passions, no matter at what age. Do something creative, whatever it might be. Believe in yourself, and if that fails, believe in the people who believe in you. Find your passion, and you will find yourself. Follow the storylines that uplift you, not defeat you. And therein lies the confidence to face life's challenges with courage and creativity. Write your own storylines with kindness and with love. No. <laughs> I wept when I saw your book and I'm making you do it again. Was, oh, thank you. You know, beautiful. I'd love to take questions from the audience out there on Zoom and YouTube. But before we do that, could I, I just love to say a few thank yous. First of all, I would love to thank my publisher, McIntyre Purcell, and particularly John McIntyre for this beautiful book and for putting me on to it in the first place. I'd like to thank uh, Rachel and McNally Robinson for having this Zoom platform so that we can bring books to the world in this format, um, even if we can't be together in person. I'd like to definitely oh, thank Thelma so much for sharing her life and her, her photographs with me and to thank her sons, Gord and Ron, both of whom were very diligent and helpful in the editing process of this book at a time when I was not allowed to go visit Thelma because of the COVID lockdowns. And finally, I'd like to thank you, Joanne. So I appreciate you being here. Do we have any questions from the audience or Joanne, do you have any other questions? I'm having to unmute here. Did I do it all right? Yeah, you're I, unmuted. I, want, I was muted while you were speaking because you don't want my heavy breathing overcoming you. So um, there are a number of questions which I will start to try to get through as quickly as possible. But first, I just, I want to read a short review from, from David Gutnick who did that original CBC documentary that started the oh, whole wow. thing. Um, and Again, put, you'll have to put up with me reading this so I don't get it wrong, but he, he sent this note. This, if you don't believe my review, you should believe David Gunnings. This beautifully brave and subtle book arrived today and I'm so happy for you and Selma, but even more happy for the rest of us because you take us into her remarkable life. It will live long past Selma the woman, long past you and me because it teaches us so much, not only about one woman, but about society, her dreams, her frustrations, her force, a prairie classic. Isn't oh, that thank beautiful? You. Thank you, David. Thank you, Joanne. Yeah, beautiful. So yes, there are a number of questions and I'll do my best to um, hammer through them. Okay, very short question from Judy. Did Thelma say anything about tennis? Did Thelma say anything about tennis? Is that tennis. the question? Yes. Oh my yes. gosh. Thelma I don't know what that means, tennis. I'm sorry. Oh yes, Thelma loved, when Thelma was a little girl, she taught herself to play tennis on the tennis court across the road. And uh, she actually thought, you know, maybe she could be, um, uh, a, she loved tennis so much. She, um, she played in a Valley League and um, when she went off to college, she got a scholarship for college. And the thing that she was most excited about was being able to play on the college team. So. Thelma was always a very physically active person, but tennis was her sport. Absolutely. That's interesting. I didn't know that about her. So that, thanks for that question, Judy. Thank From you, Judy. Lisa. Um, I can't wait to get my hands on this book. Ms. Amy Jo, were you able to personally present a copy of the book to Thelma? Yes, I was able to present a copy of the book to Thelma. So Thelma is in a care home here in town. Mm -hmm. And um, it's one of it, it has uh, during the pandemic uh, lockdown, it, it closed its doors and I was unable to visit for um, the past six months. But it's eased a little bit and I can visit Thelma for short visits outside 
as long as all protocols are being followed. So I have been able to sit down with her. I have presented her with the book. I took a picture of her with the book. Sorry, I can't share it right now. It's on my phone. But um, she, she, hmm, Thelma is a perfectionist. I would have to say that uh, when it comes to the photos, um, she might have, she might have, um, well, she just thought the reproduction was, you know, maybe some of them could have been a little sharper, but that's Thelma for you. Also, I should say that we uh, enlarged some of these photos quite a bit. So they did, the resolution did change, but I tell you, Thelma loved the cover of the book. She loved that we used that picture of her taken by her father when she was a little girl. That's a lovely photo, actually. I know she, she does have that look on her face, but it's just, I don't know, it has so much character to it. Um, it's, and, the, and Todd wants to know if Thelma still takes photos today. Is she still okay with doing that? And um, I, again, the question, has she seen your book and what does she think of it? But I think we, we, we know that. So is she still taking any photos? No, Thelma is not taking photos today. And actually, she has hasn't really embraced uh, these uh, modern technology um, in terms of digital cameras. She is not and does not to use digital um, cameras. She's very, very much passionate for uh, film and black and white and developing them herself, all of which is not really possible for her to do in the, the care home where she is right now. So um, so no, she's not taking photos, but she's still working on them in a sense that there's still her collection. She's uh, working the Reme Modern Gallery in Saskatoon is doing a retrospective of her work in the new year. And she'll be working with them to pull the photos together and make sure that they're uh, over time, you know, labeled properly and set up properly with the audio tapes and everything that that were with them originally. So she's very active still as an artist and curating and working with her body of work, but not taking photos anymore. That's that's interesting. And, and we were going to mention at the end of the program uh, about the Ramey Modern Retrospective, and that's coming in February. Is that right? Yes, well, February yes. Uh, 21st, I believe, and it runs till August, so everyone should have plenty of time to get down to the Remy and see that show, and if you're not actually in Saskatoon, you should come visit us in 2021 so that you can see Thelma's art show. And we should, we should tell Elaine Shane to come up and visit us. Oh, yes. Because she also has a question. Yes. Um, when you were selecting the photos for the book, how did you and Thelma agree on the photos to use? Were you on the same page or did you differ on which ones should go in? That is such a great question. Thelma was so great to work with. She let me pick pictures. I picked the pictures. Um, and then I wow. showed her the pictures that I wanted to use. And sometimes she would go, mm, I don't know, that picture doesn't mean as much to me as that one. So then we might switch them out. Or sometimes she'd say, hmm, that's interesting that you chose that one. Why? Why did you choose that one? And I would tell her what I was thinking. And because uh, as a writer, um, I was writing stories to go with the pictures. So sometimes I had to choose the pictures to advance the story. Not necessarily, um, well, I shouldn't say, there, there were so many to choose from. I would pick those that advance the story. And I would say in 99% of the photos that were chosen, for this book, Thelma concurred on them. We didn't have any arguments over whatsoever. And I would say the same for the text. Thelma edited the text, read it over for corrections and accuracy and, um, and perhaps even expanding in some places where she felt more explanation was needed uh, on something. But otherwise she left the writing to me. And that's, that's what made her such a, a, a wonderful person to work with. She really respected me and my, my thought process in writing and choosing the pictures as much as I respected her, her life. She shared it with me and her photos. She allowed me to take home and scan and choose from for this book. It was just a delightful process all around. Just a true collaboration. And you know, a true professional respects a true professional, Amy Jo, even so mm -hmm. there. Yes. That's why I call it our book. And yeah. if you look inside, it says text by Amy Jo Eman, but photos by Thelma oh. Stevens Pepper. Right. Lovely. Uh, Rachel, Rachel Sally Newfeld can I ask one more question. Do I have time for one or two more? 
to send me a little note there. Of course. Thank you. What about, oh, this is from Dee. Hi Dee. It's, um, what about all of Thelma's other photographs? Will there be another show? Wow. You know, I'm not exactly sure what is going to be chosen for the Remy Modern Show. I'm proved to the, the curator's work there. So I don't know how many of her other photos are going to be shown there. And, uh, and I don't think it's going to include the, um, the vintage photos of her, her youth and that her sure. Um, I don't know when there will be an opportunity to see uh, all of some of those pictures, but it would be wonderful if an opportunity came along. The pictures that her vintage photographs are all framed still and hanging on her walls. So they're available and um, I'm sure she would love to show them in some way if, if there was a, a gallery or, or a place somewhere where they to be shown. So okay. I would cross my fingers on that, but I can't promise anything. Right. Um, somebody, and I can't tell who this is, sorry. Are any of the recorded interviews in the book, like in their, I think what they mean is transcribed word for, uh, verbatim in the book, if I understand correctly. Yes. Yes. Uh, some of them are transcribed. I, oh, I try and pick what to, um, to transcribe or not. Those ladies that and, at, and their voices, they are just so powerful, just so powerful that I really wanted to capture some of that in the book, but obviously I can't include audio, but, um, oh, I, could, could I just read one? Oh, okay, I'm going to read Mrs. Dreel, just a little bit. Mrs. Dreel. Thelma, Mrs. Dreel in the care home always wore her apron, always. It's a gingham apron. Remember those gingham aprons? And then ladies would uh, do little stitching in the squares and make a pattern along the edge of the apron. This lady always wore her apron, even though, of course, in the home, they're not cooking for themselves anymore. Yep. They don't have kitchens in their rooms. But it's like was part of her dress. She got up in the morning, she put on her apron, and Thelma wanted to know why. So... So she sat down with her, with her tape recorder, and asked her why, uh, and talked to her about this. Well, it turns out that Mrs. Driol, at one point in her life, she made pies. And this is a woman after my own heart. I love to make pies. She made pies for the local Pinder's lunch counter. Thelma, now Mrs. Driol, I'd like, to, I'd like you to tell me about those pies you used to make for Pinder's. What do you remember about them? Mrs. Driel. Oh, I used to bake a lot of pies. I used to bake 12, 15, 20 pies. Thelma. I think you told me once you made 40 pies. And they used to pick them up in the morning. Mrs. Driel. Yes, I didn't deliver. Thelma. And then your husband told you no more pies? You couldn't make pies anymore? Mrs. Driel. He said, I didn't marry you, that you had to work. But I said, I want to, because I said, I've got to do something. I said, I'd go crazy. But he said, I could sit around all day long and I wouldn't have to do anything. Well, I said, I'm not you, <laughs> Thelma. Well, what about Pinders? Did they still want you to make pies? Mrs. Driel, yes, but my husband didn't want me to do it. So I didn't do it, Thelma. Well, what about when you stopped making pies? What did people say, Mrs. Driel? People said, I didn't make those pies. I said, how do you know? Oh, they said, your pies are altogether different. They're rich and they are tasty and these are just flat. They liked my pies and they didn't want me to quit making pies. Thelma, I bet you missed it. Mrs. Driel, I was lonely. Wow, what a great conversation. That's amazing. So that's a sample of the type of audios that will be included with all the photos in the Decades of Voices 
exhibition when it shows up at the Remy. I am just checking to see if there's another question that. there that we can do. That was a great one, yeah. Do you know what if, oh, do you know if, I'm sorry, I beg your pardon, do you know if Selma is watching this? This virtual launch? I don't think Selma's watching, no. Um, maybe she, maybe we can Selma does, let her see the recording. Selma doesn't have an iPad or a smartphone. Pardon? So, oh, so, so we can show um, the recording. Next time, yes, next time I go see her, I will take my, I'll show her, because it's going to be on YouTube after this evening, um, and I will, sh I will play it for her. Well, that, that was amazing. Um, I, uh, I am just, I think I, just wonderful. I think I saw Merle Massey and say she has to go make pies and I agree I'm all for going to make pies <laughs> did you make cookies today no I didn't I was going to but I didn't <laughs> I was, yeah I know you're, you're kind of thinking about doing that so I was wondering if you're gonna make cookies or pies or something like that so yeah um I don't know if I see any other different questions here yes all right okay well, I appreciate you, all those questions. I appreciate everyone who came today. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you, Joanne. And that was that was terrific. And thank you, Thelma. Thank you. Thank you, Amy. I really I hope appreciate everyone being can uh, yeah. Thank you. Can Bye, we throw everybody. it back to Rachel? Hi, Hello. Rachel. Thank you so much. That was wonderful. Um, we didn't get to all of the questions, but um, Amy Jo is happy to answer um, any lingering questions on social media. I think uh, you're Prairie at Prairie Feast on Twitter. And you can also contact her through her website, ajemen.com. Um, and I'm also going to send her a transcript of this chat so that she can see all of your uh, lovely comments here. Um, so I just want to thank you both uh, to Joanne J.C. Paulson for joining us tonight as a guest host and of course to Amy Jo Eamon uh, for, for sharing, sharing your work with us and sharing Thelma's work with us. And can you remind us again when Thelma Pepper's retrospective is at the Ramey? Um, it, I believe the date is February 21st that it opens there and runs until August. So February to August, and you can find all the details on the website of Remy Modern. And I'm sure I will be tweeting them copiously between now and then. Perfect, yes. So make sure to follow Amy Jo uh, for updates on that. I see someone in the chat is saying February 13th. Um, 13th, so okay. That's probably um, someone who knows way better than me. <laughs> <laughs> um, and thanks again to uh, McIntyre Purcell for working with us on the launch. Uh, again, please uh, feel free to order a copy of Thelma online. We still have a few signed copies, so you'll want to snag those up. Uh, you can also just give the bookstore a call uh, tomorrow morning and we'll set one aside for you. And just again, thanks so much for joining us. We hope that you all stay safe, take care, and have a wonderful rest of the evening. Thanks again. Thanks, everybody. Rachel. Thanks, Amy. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye, everyone.